If there's only one God, why does it sometimes sound like there's three? Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about the Trinity. Yeah, and the Trinity is God. And there is only one God, but he is three persons. Three persons in one being. Three persons, one God. And that concept is really important, but it's also really hard to wrap your mind around. And to try to explain the Trinity, people have tried to come up with like analogies. Like I love analogies. And actually the Bible does too. There are a lot of analogies in the Bible. And by analogy, I mean, I mean where you say, this is like that. So when the Bible says that Jesus is like the Passover lamb, that's an analogy, right? And to help explain the Trinity, people have tried to come up with analogies. But the problem is that these analogies don't really work. They don't really explain how God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit can be three separate people, but one being, one person, one God. So like sometimes people will say, an egg is like God. Because you've got like the shell, and you've got the white of the egg, and you've got the yolk. You've got three parts, one egg. And they say that's like God. You know, you've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they're all one God. But that analogy does not work very well. First of all, it's like, it's not equal, right? Because like in an egg, you've got a lot more white than yolk, right? And there's a lot more yolk than there is shell. And so it'd be like, okay, well, which part of God is lesser than the other parts of God? But there is no lesser part of God. So the egg analogy doesn't work very well because it's too unequal. And so there might be somebody who says, okay, well, you just need to imagine an egg with as much shell as it has egg white and as much egg white as it has yolk. Or like imagine a three-leaf clover where all the leaves are the same size. Well, that doesn't work because it's too separate. It's not that God is split into three different people, right? Like you would split a pie. It's not that one third of God is the Holy Spirit and one third of God is God the Father and one third of God is Jesus. Jesus is holy God, 100% God. Holy Spirit, 100% God. God the Father, 100% God. It's not just that all the parts of God are equal. All the parts of God are holy God, 100% God, totally God. It's not like in movies and stuff, you know, where you'd have like three robots and they're pretty strong, but when you combine them all together, you get a super robot. No, it's not like that at all. Each of the three persons of God is equal to the other three persons of God, and they are all 100% God, all totally God, all holy God. So those analogies don't work. And another analogy that people will use is, is they'll say, well, God is like me. So they'd say like, I, Douglas, am a brother, and I'm a son, and I'm a student, right? That's sort of like saying there's three people in one Douglas. But those don't really work because that's not me being different people. That's just different roles that I play, different ways that I relate to other people. And so to my parents, I'm their son, right? So that's a little bit different than me and my brother. I'm his brother. But God doesn't change depending on who he is talking to, right? It's not that he's different people to different people. And again, those things like brother, son, student, those aren't different people. Those are just different roles that I play. So I'm one person in one being with many different roles. God is three persons in one being, and he too has many different roles. So that analogy doesn't work very well. And some people will say, oh, well, God is like water, right? So water has like three different parts. It can either be a solid, you know, like ice or a liquid, like, you know, running water, or a gas, you know, like when water evaporates. And it's all water, but just three different forms of water. But again, that analogy does not work because just like God is not different for different people, he's not different in different situations, right? Like water turns to ice if it is cold. There's not a situation where God turns into Jesus or a situation where God turns into God the Father or a situation where God turns into the Holy Spirit. God is always the Father. He is always the Son and he is always the Holy Spirit. The only way that that analogy would work would be if all the water in all the universe was a solid, liquid, and a gas all the time and in every place and in every situation. And water cannot do that. So it's not a great analogy. 
So some people might say, okay, well, what if, what if God is like the sun, right? You see, you got like the star, like the sun is a star, and that could be like God the Father. But then the star also has like light and warmth, and that can be like Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Well, that doesn't work because God the Father did not come first, right? God the Father did not make Jesus or the Holy Spirit. God has always been. And when I say that God has always been, I mean God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit has always been. God has always been God. All three persons of the Trinity have always been God. So none of these analogies work to explain what God is like. And you might be saying to yourself, okay, well now Douglas is going to give us the analogy that works. Well, no, I'm not. Because I don't think there is an analogy that works. Because again, an analogy is like, this thing is like that thing. But the truth is, there's only one God. And to my knowledge, there is no thing in creation, in all of nature, nothing that we can see or point to. There's nothing and no one like our God. Three persons in one being. Nothing. There's nothing that can fully explain what God is, other than what the Bible says. Right? The Bible says that there is one God. Right? It says it in the Old Testament, and Jesus says it in the New Testament. One God. Jesus also said that he and the Father are one. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is God, and that God the Father sends the Holy Spirit to those who believe in Jesus. Jesus told his disciples that he should baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. And those are just some of the verses. There are lots of verses that support this idea of the Trinity. Even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible, it is absolutely clear from Scripture that God is three persons in one being, one God. So if you try to think of an analogy, it really hurts your brain trying to think, trying to imagine what the Trinity is like. But if you just accept the fact that it is what it is, he is what he is, it's actually not that complicated. Jesus is 100% God. The Holy Spirit, 100% God. God the Father, 100% God. And our God, made up of three persons, he is the one true God. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And yeah, seriously, the Trinity is a really hard thing to wrap your head around. At least if you try to think of it as something you've seen before. Because there's nothing and no one like our God. And so it's, it's pretty understandable to be confused about the Trinity. And there are some ways that those different analogies can be helpful in trying to understand God, but every single one of them falls flat at some point, right? They are not great analogies. Because again, I don't think there is a good analogy. God is God. He is three persons and he is one. 